Granite Curling Club has been around for 50 years. It's an Olympic sport. A couple of our members have even thrown out first pitches at Mariners games. So we assume that everyone in Seattle knows about curling. Well, we're at Green Lake today, just a couple miles from the curling club. We're going to find out what people really know, because we're going jaywalking. And uh, who am I talking to? My name is Daniel Stevens. And you're from? Green Lake. What I want you to do is imagine you're a, a superior curling instructor and you have to explain some curling terms to the new curlers. Okay. I'll give you the terms. Now this is going to get me in trouble, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's like these people pushing this stone down into some circles and stuff and knocking the other guy out and getting scores, I guess. What was the rest of the question? Why would someone do that? Not the slightest idea. <laughs> they must be from Minnesota. <laughs> All right, I'm here with... Kate. From... Colorado. So first I want you to explain to them how the game is played. Well, the game is played, um, you go on an ice rink and you take a broom from your kitchen sink, or from your kitchen, and you throw a stone um, down and you try to hit your goal. Okay. How heavy is this stone? Eight pounds. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some terms and I want you to explain to these new curlers what these terms mean. Okay. okay? Uh, eight ender. Um, that's when you win by eight points. Uh, what is a gripper? A gripper is the handle of the curling broom. And how important is it? Extremely important. And what, you, what, what, go ahead. If you have a loose gripper, then you could possibly let the broom fly out of your hands. As a new curler, if you're, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're curling and you, and you get cozied, what does that mean? Ooh, um, it's like tennis elbow, but for curling. <laughs> <laughs> Very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you're curling and you become cozied? Well, that happens before you start curling. <laughs> and when you're in the stands, you're cozied, but it's really comatose. What happens if you're curling and you get cozied? Oh, I'd sit down. <laughs> Remember, cozied, sit down. That's what I would do. If you're a new curler and you get cozied, what happens to you? <laughs> you gotta go to the doctor. <laughs> um, you're in the back of the formation. You gotta go to the doctor. <laughs> If you learn how to... And don't forget, <laughs> playing curling high is fun. <laughs> uh, Shelly, tell me, tell me in your own words how curling is played. Um, they, you like hit a disc or something, like down, <laughs> and then people sweep it to make it go faster. And then you try to hit it in a certain target area, and that's how many points you get. How many people on a curling team? Eight. <laughs> and can you tell me exactly how much a curling rock weighs? About approximately 58 pounds. <laughs> how much does a curling rock weigh? Like 16 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Probably seven or eight pounds. I'm here with... Emma. Sarah. And you guys are from where? Seattle. From Seattle, yeah. Okay. What I need you guys to do is to explain to me, as if I'm a brand new curler, how the game of curling is played. Ooh, that's a, that's a tough question. Well, it's played on ice uh, with brooms and um, I'm not sure of the technical term, but some sort of a weight that is pushed and slides down the ice and the, like they, a disc. A like big, a disc? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a big disc. It's a, I think it's a team sport. So I think you take the turns. ice as it goes down and guide it as it is on its way and you want it to stop in the target? Yes. And how many people on a team? Uh, five. Five, yeah. What are the five positions on the curling team? Oh, that's a good one. You may need to help me with this one. Um, technical positions. Um, let's see, so you have a spotter, a runner, 
Um, I think there's I think you the have multiple runners. Yeah. Yeah. Probably three runners. three runners. Yeah. So a spotter, a, three runners, and then you have the marksman. Uh, well, yeah. the marksman is there for support for the spotter because the spotter, you know, is trying to track the rock as it goes down and. Um, so the marksman's there, you know, as support and helping, and they're talking to each other and trying to figure out, you know, where, what they're going to tell the runners to do with the brooms. Like a third base coach. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm here with... Dylan Henderson, Trevor Swedberg. And you guys are from where? Seattle area. Seattle. Okay, good. Well, as, as curling experts, I need you to explain technically how the game is played. Technically how the game is played. How you think the game is played. Somebody uh, very gently... Throws the ball down the uh, the little ice, and then there's I think there's two guys that with little brushes just scrub back and forth really quick, and they kind of maneuver the the puck wherever it needs to go, and hopefully they'll get it in the center, right? Basically. Yeah. He called it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm here with Leah and Kristen. And where are you guys from? Spokane. Spokane, Washington. Good. Okay. How important is it to be on one side or the other of the hog line? I think, well, it is important, and I would explain that to my students because the hog line is the, the line that the people that curl with the broom, it's the line that they stand behind when the, the person's throwing it. And it's important because it determines what side they're going to be on to curl from. I, I don't know what a hog line is. It reminds me of something like with related to hot dogs or something in life. So I have no <laughs> idea what a hog line is. Can you explain the importance of the hog line? See, I'm a fisherman, and a hog line is something I connect with, and that's an opportunity to drink a lot of beer. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> well, t tell them at least how important it is to get it over the hog line. <laughs> well, you, you got to have enough muscle to get it past that line, or everybody calls you a hog. <laughs> I would say that... It's a lot about teamwork, so communication is key because the people who shoot the puck, the ball, the stone, the, <laughs> what's it called? The I think she's talking more about the emotional aspect of the teamwork, <laughs> okay. the technical aspect, but, I think involves... But they have to yell to the brushers at the end, right? <laughs> and so it's very, they're like scrub or hurry or... You know, it's very intense. I'm here with... Nadia. And you're from? Russia. Russia. <laughs> so you know all about curling? I played once. Do you know some curling terms? No, I played back in Russia, so... They don't have any curling terms in Russia? Terms, well, yeah, but we use Russian terms. <laughs> what did you yell when you wanted the rock to go faster? Ah! <laughs> is, is alcohol ever involved in curling? Yes, there's usually a bar nearby, maybe on the second floor, and uh, it's real, real good deals on pitchers. If it was my team, and if I were this instructor giving lessons, I would mandate whiskey shots before and after. <laughs> I'm going to sign her up right now. Okay. <laughs> and fast, and fast! <laughs> right, 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 right! <laughs> Left! <laughs> Target. <laughs> Congrats for 50 years of curling it up in Seattle. Happy, Happy anniversary to the curling club. Happy 50th. Happy, Happy 50th, 50th anniversary, anniversary Granite, Granite Curling, curling Club. club. <laughs> 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 With 50th anniversary of Curling Club Granite. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary. Granite. <laughs> Happy 50th anniversary. Oh. <laughs> yeah, get it right. Ready? Here we go. Go ahead. Happy, Happy 50th, 50th anniversary, anniversary Granite, Granite Curling, Curling Club. Club. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, I'll try to No, I'm not trying to.